Hey, what's good? I'm Mitch, a portrait and lifestyle photographer. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how I edit my Canon RAW files in Adobe Lightroom to create a consistent style. But real quick, before we get into that, let me show you the gear that I use to capture my images. Starting off with my camera, which is currently filming this video, the Canon R6 Mark II an absolute powerhouse. It takes amazing photos and videos and the colors that I get out of this thing, hands down my favorite, 10 out of 10, could not be happier. And for my lenses, I've got the Canon 16 to 35 f2.8 and a 24 to 70 f2.8. Now that that's out of the way, let's hop into this edit. All right, so the first part of creating a consistent editing style is to have edited your first photo to begin with. So we're gonna use this photo right here to get started. First up, I'm dropping my white balance. I'm gonna drop my exposure in the photo. I'm gonna drop the highlights to retain some detail in the neon sign. I'm gonna bring up my shadows. I usually go about 50, and then I bring up the blacks to about 35. I'm gonna add in some texture, and I'm gonna drop the clarity to negative five, because I really want this set to feel dreamy. If you can see, there's already some glow in the image because I used a mist filter. I think it was a black pro mist filter to create that diffusion, but I'm gonna drop the clarity to make that effect look stronger. Next up, going down to the curves. So I'm gonna raise the highlights and the mid-tones, and then we're gonna drop the shadows ever so slightly, and I might raise the blacks a little bit, just to bring back some of the detail in the blacks, because I don't want the details here in the jacket and in the eyes to just be lost. Next, I'm going to go to the calibration, and I'm gonna add some pinks and magenta into the shadows. I'm gonna bring up the red hue to 25, and just in case you're unaware of what the calibration does, basically it creates global adjustments instead of localized adjustments. What I usually go for is 25, and then I bring the reds up to 20, and then I don't really touch the green on my night photos, I just add a little bit of saturation, and then I drop the blue hue towards the teal, and I add a little bit of saturation there. But, as you can see, because we really boosted up the red hue, our reds have gone from sort of a true red to more of an orange. So to fix that, we're coming back to the HSL, and then we're gonna drop the reds to about negative 40, and I'm gonna drop the oranges as well to around negative 15, for the yellows, I'm gonna just slightly drop it just by the, the tiniest little bit because I still really, oh, actually, I might raise it up a little bit. I kind of like that sort of mustard yellow there. The greens, I'm gonna push the greens towards the teal section. The teals, I'm gonna take back a bit closer to the greens. The blue, I'm gonna drop towards the teal. And then the purples, I'm gonna also slightly drop backwards. Now I'm gonna bump red saturation just to make it pop and stand out. I'm gonna go 40 for now. And I'm gonna do the same with the oranges. Now for the yellows, I'm gonna drop the saturation. Same with the greens, because I really want certain colors to be the focus of this image, right? I really like the reds and the oranges here, but that green, I don't really want it to be as loud, you could say. And so a lot of what my editing process is, is just playing around with the sliders and seeing pretty much how they affect the image and then making my adjustments based off of that. So we're gonna drop the purples as well to make sure that there's no color cast in the wall and drop the magentas as well. I'm gonna drop the red luminance a tiny bit. I'm gonna drop the orange luminance as well to make the color feel more dense and more rich. I'm not gonna touch the yellow I will drop the green luminance a bit just so that it doesn't have that, that glow as much. Same with the aquas. Actually, I might boost the aquas and I think I'll boost the blues as well. Same with the purples and the magentas. Now, my favorite way to create color contrast in my image has been the color grading wheels, right? I love it. It makes my life so much easier. So we're gonna add a bunch of green into this thing. So I'm gonna go around 140, around the 130, 140 mark, add some teal. Same thing with the mid-tones around 25, and again with the highlights. Now, if you're noticing the same thing I am, you're seeing that the background looks all right, but my subject is very dark. So here's how we're gonna fix that. We're gonna make a subject mask. So we're gonna boost up the exposure in the shadows just to bring her back and sort of match her with the rest of the image. So now she's a bit more properly exposed, but the background is a bit distracting. So I'm gonna darken the background with another, with a background mask. All right, I'm happy with that. So then the second thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a background mask and darken the background ever so slightly. Not enough that it's crazy noticeable, but just enough that she pops out a little bit more. And I think we're gonna bump up the whites a tiny bit. Now I wanna drop the vibrance I'm gonna boost the saturation. So the colors are looking all right, but they're missing a little something. And the reason they're missing a little something is because we haven't touched the RGB curves. So we're gonna do that now. 
I'm going to bump up the reds. I'm going to drop the teals. I'm going to bring up a little bit of green, even though we brought a bunch of green in with the, the color wheels. And then I'm going to drop that ever so slightly there. And then with the yellows, I'm just going to make three points here and have them all just lifted towards the blues pretty much. Now to combat that, I'm going to drop my contrast to about negative 40. Negative 25, actually. I'm going to bring the blacks to negative 30. Actually, I might just go negative 20 on the contrast. And then we're going to just add some more green into the shadows and into the midtones. Take a little bit out of the highlights there, maybe a little bit less here. And I'm going to boost the shadow luminance. And for the highlights, I'm going to drop it ever so slightly. Now I'm going to come down to my sharpening and I do the same thing every single time here. So I don't even have to think about that. We're going to add a little bit of green, but like I said, I want this image to be softer. So we're going to come up back to the clarity, drop it to negative 10. And I'm liking it, but it's, it's feeling a bit overpowering. So I'm going to go back into my tone curve. I'm going to drop down some of the greens, actually, instead of lifting up the shadows. I'm going to drop down the contrast to about negative 40. We're going to bring some warmth into the image. That's what it was missing. A little bit of a warm kick. Then I'm going to drop the blacks ever so slightly and the shadows as well. Go 35 on both. Then I'm actually going to go back to my subject mask and drop the shadows on her a little bit. Actually, I'll drop the exposure a little bit and I'll bring up the shadows and I'll add a little bit of magenta tint just to balance out the skin tones a little bit. I think I might drop that to 30. Bring back some yellow saturation and take out some orange saturation. And I think I'm happy with that edit. So once you're happy with your edit, how do you make your style consistent? Well, there's two ways. Number one is making a preset. So the way to make a preset is you go up to this plus button, hit create preset, basically tick all the settings that you want to tick. So I'd also tick masking for this and click create. But then what you can also do is start to sync your edits across. So the way I do that is hit Control or Command A, depending on Windows or Mac, and hit this sync button down here. And then tick everything that you want Lightroom to sync across and hit synchronize. And what that'll do is practically sync that edit across the rest of your photos. Now I find that really helpful because it just means that all of my edits will have that same consistent look and framework, right? So it makes my job a lot easier. So what's the point of having a consistent style? I've got three reasons why I think it's very important. So number one, and I think this one's the most obvious, it's making your work recognizable to others. Now, when you've got a consistent style, it makes your work easily and instantly recognizable to people who follow your work. It also means that if someone's scrolling through Instagram and they see a photo, they might not even be following you, but they might see it and they might recognize that it's your work which is what you want at the end of the day. Number two, stronger storytelling. Say for example, you're editing what's meant to be like a dark and moody photo set, right? But all of a sudden, some of the photos in that carousel are just bright and happy. It doesn't make sense, you know? Like what happened to the editing style? Where's the consistency? It throws people off. So if you've got that unified style, it helps you keep that cohesion. And number three, client trust and client expectation. Someone might hire you because they've seen your work and they like your editing style. They might want you to replicate that for their project. But if you don't have a consistent look to your work, they might not be too sure what they're going to get from you. And they might not be sure if you're the right person for them. So it might just go with someone else. All right. So I hope that this has helped you. And I hope that you've learned something new and go out there and create something.